Hi, welcome everyone. We're here with our faculty Steadyway instructor series talking about Virginia Westland's uh, different Steadyway courses. And today I'm happy to have Dr. Craig Wansick with us talking about his course. Dr. Wansick, I'm gonna go right into it with our first question. And the first question is, what is the title of your course, the location, and when did you first start, start taking students there? So the title of the course is The Art of Waging Peace in Israel and Palestine. Uh, I first started taking students, well, actually in the year 2000, um, I, but uh, most recently in 2018 and 2020. Great. And kind of what are some of the can't miss sites on your course itinerary? Uh, most people expect to see Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, the temple, you know, the Dome of the Rock, the Temple Mount, uh, where the temple used to be, where, a couple, where two mosques are right now. Uh, the Western Wall, which is also my background, which is significant for many, many reasons. The last remaining part of the temple, it's a very, very holy place. You can see it as well. Uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre uh, is probably the most famous Christian church in the world, I'd say. The most important is it's, it's, it's a huge complex. Uh, tradition says that it is over the place where Jesus was crucified and also over the place where Jesus was buried. It's a, just a pretty amazing, amazing church for a lot of reasons. And then, you know, some of them, you, you said the can't miss sites. Mm -hmm. Some people might see them as superficial, but I don't think, unless you go shopping in Jerusalem's old city and kind of go, go through these pathways and look at spices and these sorts of foods, you're really missing something. Bethlehem is important to go there. Many people are familiar with it, and I'll talk more about that later. But uh, the Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, we spent time in, in Tel Aviv. That's, that's from the 2020 trip. Uh, up, up north, the Sea of Galilee. I think many people are familiar with the Sea of Galilee in terms of Christianity in particular. Uh, the, uh, the Dead Sea, of course, people like hanging out on the lowest place on the earth, and the Dead Sea is significant. That's, that's also the group in 2020 covering themselves with Dead Sea mud, which is why they all have fantastic skin. And, <laughs> uh, and, and then, we, we, of course, we need floating pictures, but I don't have any there. But Masada, uh, students really like hiking, hiking up there, and that's that was just a, an amazing place. It's uh, where, well, where the last stands of uh, Jewish, uh, you know, freedom fighters died in the year seventy. So, for some pretty, from pretty amazing places. Um, you say, what are the can't miss sites? One of the things that we really want to do is see traditional places, but also uh, nature places. So. We went hiking, dancing in the streets, can't miss places or places where they really get exposed to food as well. And again, trying unknown foods and <laughs> trying foods that don't go over <laughs> quite quite as well. <laughs> I love that expression. But um, and, and so and so this the, the camels here happen to be in the city of Jericho. But these are some of the these are the, some of the can't miss places. And going with that, what is, can you tell me a memorable uh, experience from one of your past um, trips? You're gonna, yeah, and here, so here, I, I, I have these slides, that's all superficial. However, this is why study abroad is meaningful. Yeah, so the memorable experiences, gosh, I, so many of them. Uh, this is we, a couple of quick things that we did that I think were pretty memorable. Is we, went to, we went to the Dome of the Rock uh, this particular student, she's smiling because I'm taking a picture and she's wearing like, I don't know, like a gunny sack. Her, she was wearing jeans, but those jeans had ripped out knees. Yeah, you, know, you know, kind of as popular, not, not anything unusual, but, but because she was wearing those, she needed to cover herself. And so they immediately made her put that on. Um, I had another, uh, two, two other students who on the Temple Mount, uh, took a selfie and kissed each other. And cool. they were told to erase that. So, you know, those are good, those are interesting experiences. Or the Western Wall, where uh, people, women, men and women are clearly separated from each other. And it's so different. Um, I think for many of the students, seeing the separation wall between Bethlehem and Jerusalem is very, you know, just very moving. Um, make hummus, not wall. 
<laughs> well, students learn by participating in your course. You sort of kind of hinted at some of them so far. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think one of the big things is we don't have a re we don't have a very good sense of the Middle East mm -hmm. from the United States or, or of Israel for that matter. And I think going over all of a sudden makes students just recognize that they're learning so much more. Uh, from my perspective, one of the reasons why I wanted to take this trip is to take students to a place where there's conflict. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to take them to DC or I don't know, you know, so I, I and, and so some of the things they learn, what's, what I think is most unusual about this trip, I really like it. I think uh, I put, I put three things, the dual narrative, random interviews on the street and experience in people's homes. The dual narrative is one thing that stands out. On, on our trip, we have, you can see in this image, on the, the guide on the right, that woman, she's Palestinian. The one on the left in the black sweater with the scarf, he is Israeli. And so we have two different people telling different stories and offering different perspectives on conflict. And that is, that is really great. We went to a place where there's sort of a famous a site of a famous battle. Both of the guides were talking about their very different perspectives on it. I said random interviews on the street. I think this was really great. This is, uh, it's, it's so, I, I think it made students recognize what they can do in their own life, whether talking with people on campus or talking with people in their hometown. But when we were going through the street, uh, at one point we were going through and our guide, again, he's the person in the gray here, you know, just stops and interviews people uh, along the way. And people are more than willing to talk with us. And we really got very interesting perspectives. This particular man was, was taxed and we're walking through old street or the old city. This particular student was uh, doing um, a paper on the IDF and so I said to our guide, hey, if we see the IDF, can we just stop and talk? And so, again, that's the sort of thing we do. We talked with random people uh, on a hill overlooking Gaza. Uh, we ran into some people who were just up there playing music. And so we sang and things like this. So that's a second thing that's really meaningful are, you know, just these random conversations. We we're walking through a refugee camp and these kids, you can see the wall there's a wall there and they were throwing rocks at these monkeys. And you can see one of the monkeys represents the United States, one European Union, one Great Britain or in England. And, and they were throwing rocks and they didn't really kind of know what they were doing. You can see it says liberate Palestine. And so all of a sudden we stop and talk with these kids. And it was, it was just really pretty fascinating. They're there. They're getting a ride from one of our students. <laughs> um, <laughs> And the third thing, you know, you asked what people can learn, uh, experiences in people's homes, and sometimes literal homes, sometimes figurative. There's a, a rabbi who has, he also happens to be a chef, we ate at his house, and he tended to be pretty conservative, uh, politically and religious, and, and it was just a great experience because we learned about his perspective, and in the process, we, you know, he blessed his children. We really saw what a, a Sabbath night was like. Uh, we went to a Palestinian Lutheran farm and, you know, we refused to be enemies. And so we really got into people's houses. We went into a government office in a settlement. And I have to say, this was on the same day as we went to this Palestinian Lutheran farm. And these people wouldn't necessarily get along with these people mm -hmm. and, and very much vice versa. But we got to see both of their perspectives in the same day. And so that is, is amazing. We went to people's houses to have homestay meals um, and uh, just went to places where you, where you couldn't normally go if you're tourists. Mm -hmm. I think the, the thing that maybe stood out most to me is the homestays in Palestine. I have one more kind of statement for you. Um, can you finish the following sentence? I lead study away courses because... I put down here facing complex problems. That's that's one reason. I, at least study away. I don't, you know, I, we never know our own motives all that well. Well, my uh, my time in study abroad shaped me a great deal. I studied, I studied when I was a student. I studied at universities in Japan, and West Germany, and Jordan, 
and Israel. And those experiences shaped me so much. You know, not until I learned Japanese, for instance, did I really understand the limits of English. Not until I understood Japanese did I realize that there are some things I cannot express because I speak the English language and it's limited in how it can express things or it shapes how you learn certain things. So it's so life-changing to study abroad. And I'm really gr very, very grateful for people who made those opportunities for me. So I'd like to say that I lead study abroad because I'm grateful to people who helped me. Um, well, thank you very much, Dr. Wansik. You definitely have provided a lot of information and we will provide your contact information uh, at the end of this um, at the end of this video. So thank you again very much for sharing all that great information. And, and, and if anybody is interested, I encourage you to contact Dr. Wansik for more information. So thank you again, and we'll see you for the next video.